did note that when we were up there, it seemed to be devoid of uh, wildlife. You know, we didn't see squirrels, chipmunks, deer, uh, any signs of them. How unusual is that for your mountains out here? Um, I thought it was strange. Like I said, we didn't see any signs of anything out there. And how many people did Warren County commit? We had our emergency response team up there, which is comprised of 13 team members. So when you heard about it, what did you do? Go up there. Go in the search. We might figure it would be, go up there and we'll find them and it'd be over, you know. The Air National Guard was going over with uh, infrared. State police had helicopters with a guy out. You walk through the woods, no matter how thick they were, you had to see the other guy's ankle. We went through some terrain you just wouldn't believe, swamps up to your chest, and we covered every bit of it. They were thinking maybe he got to a road and got hit by a car. And uh, so they checked on the sides of the roads and never found anything. The first couple days, I thought for sure we were going to find him. After about the third or fourth, I said, boy, this ain't good. Mile out, we were still medium away. Walking through the woods, you trip over somebody, never mind not see them. They would have what they called bump lines. 45 lines that they would not run through the uh, forest. And we knew that was like a start and a stop. The guy in the end had a roll of string and would tie it to a tree and just keep walking. And when we were done with that grid, they'd tie it off and everybody would shift to the other side and walk back. So you know that between this string line, this string line, and between your bump lines, that area has been covered. A few days later, we went back to the same areas and did them the other way. I mean, we covered every inch of ground up there. The immediate area looked like a spider web because not only did they go this way, they went this way, and they went that way. So there was string everywhere. You know, 300 people in there one day. People asked who he was, like, was he the governor's brother or something? It, it was incredible. How many jurisdictions do you think responded to this search? There was probably a dozen or so volunteer fire departments that had members here. Probably 50 or 60 all together in different organizations. Oh. <laughs> New York State Corrections came out. They searched with their dogs. There's tons of volunteer search and rescue teams that came out with their canine units. I mean, they hit, I guess, for a little while, but for not very long. Day two that we were involved with the search up there, it rained heavily all day. Obviously, an animal didn't get torn up because there'd be a big scatter. There'd be a huge, you know, his clothes be ripped up, stuff be spread all over, it'd be easy to find. Not even a candy wrapper. Not that my husband would throw out a candy wrapper, because he wouldn't. That'd be in his pocket. But nothing. Not, not the walkie-talkie, not his gun. They never found anything. You would think that you'd find some trace if somebody was there, uh, especially a weapon, because a weapon's not going to disappear. It's not going to blow away. The FBI, according to their protocol, doesn't search for missing people. So do you understand why they were there? I remember they were there. I thought they were there to provide some sort of uh, technological support, but I didn't have any contact with them myself. Mm. Have you ever had them on a search that you've done? No. Sounds you had a conversation with the FBI up in Horicon. Mm -hmm. What did they tell you? They said that basically they were there to tell me that he now is considered a missing person. And... They felt that something was definitely not right, but unless and until they made a recovery, they wouldn't know what it was. That was it. That's basically what they said. In the middle of the Adirondacks, where an elderly and man disappears, two mother. agents suddenly show up. They made their way up to Lily Pond Road and they started the to now. monitor this incident. Every time an FBI agent arrives at a scene and is stating that they're monitoring it, they're taking notes and they're writing reports. And those reports go to the behavioral analysts in Virginia. And what their job is, is to look for other cases that match the profile that they're writing about. 
think they get it. I think they understand. And maybe they're trying to put the pieces together just as we are. Uh. Something odd happened, obviously. We just don't know what. I was there until 11 days. And then I finally said to my oldest son, um, I can't sit here anymore. I got to go. Uh, uh, we came back, uh, I think, for Thanksgiving. That's why we stopped. Down to just me and some rangers and guys that was it by the time it was over really such a sweet dog he sits in my kitchen window dog. Yeah. all day long he sits there and he waits for time to come back if you go by my house just see the dog in the window did your dad tell you about a sound he heard in the woods that day he said he heard some kind of snapping or crack sound that was strange. It wasn't oh. something he normally hears in the woods. He still talks to me about it. Uh, I don't know. I, he almost said it sounded like a, like a big trap closing or something. I, I, I don't know, you know. Anything that you think that the audience should know about your dad or about this incident? Uh, I really didn't ever know. I mean, they always say you should go in prepared. Excuse me. I mean, we treated that like I was walking out here in the backyard. It was really nothing. You just, you just don't expect it. An interesting side note to the disappearance of Tom Messick is the case of Fred Drum. About the 10th day of Tom Messick's search, the Department of Conservation down. Rangers for the state of New York were pulled off while. of that event and sent 40 miles Get south to Schulerville, New York. Fred lived on his ah. rural farm with his wife. Fred was a retired supervisor from his town, was an outdoorsman. On Thanksgiving Day of 2015, Mrs. Drum went to attend a banquet, and when she returned in the afternoon, her fruit, husband wasn't vegetables. there. His car was there, all of his belongings were in the oh, house, girl. but he had simply vanished. Keto diet. There were helicopters, canines, it was a huge, huge SAR. And the eventual outcome was the same as Tom's. It's quite a coincidence that two elderly men, both hunters, disappeared from a rural area, weren't found, and both have been just chalked up to disappearing. Next, all of the missing 411 cases are the profile points. And these have been gleaned after reading thousands of cases and seeing them come up time after time and realizing that they are part of the underlying story of each of these incidents. If the victim is with others and decides to move away from them and be on their own, that's the point of time something happens and the victim disappears we call this the point of separation the most common time for a victim to disappear is in the mid to late afternoon hours granite boulders and rock fields victims are often found to disappear in the areas of granite or rock fields victims found are disappearing near water this is a very common trait and one that happens anywhere in the world is an isolated Whoa. geographical area. Uh, uh, incident in close proximity to the time the disappears, or when the search 